Now I want to talk a little bit about placing the voice. A lot of singers worry about voice placement, and if your orientation is to sing in the resonance, then it is crucial that you know how to identify the resonance of the mask. Uh, a lot of singers just sing in the nose. And even though I get it to sound pretty good, you realize I'm still singing through my nose. And I can sing like that. Singing in the nose is simply wrong. It's wrong for a number of reasons. Uh, the biggest reason in the old days, before sound enhancement systems were installed in big theaters, was the voice didn't carry. It didn't cut through uh, a big orchestra. There was a lyric baritone at New York City Opera when I was a student in New York, really, well, living in New York, and he was this gorgeous, handsome-looking, wonderful actor, talented man, uh, very musical, and was a sort of the star baritone there, but he had one problem, is that his voice wouldn't, couldn't be heard. And the, and the critics mentioned it in the newspapers. And he always said, oh, it's because the acoustics at the City Opera are so terrible. If, if I were singing at the Met, my voice would be big like everyone else's. So later he didn't get, get engaged at the Metropolitan Opera, and he got up and sang there, and then the critic said, this gentleman needs to f desperately to find a voice teacher to show him how to focus his voice, because he is totally inaudible at the Metropolitan Opera. Focus is such a terrible word. It's a word used by people who never sang anywhere. It's invented by people that don't know anything about the problems of singing over a big orchestra and being not only being heard, but being heard with a large sound, with clear diction, so that everyone can follow the text and to have beautiful ringing notes uh, while you're being heard. So this fellow's mistake was a very simple one. His whole voice was placed in the M position. When I say M, my nose is open. If my nose is open, it, my resonance is too low. It's not sitting up here in the mask. It's down here in the nasal cavity. So if I go, mm -ah, and even though I'm singing and it sounds pretty good, it's, it's completely wrong, first of all, because it doesn't carry well. If it carries at all and the orchestration gets lighter, then the voice sounds very thin and somewhat colorless. Some singers sound really sound nasal and very thin and very uh, un uninteresting. It also affects the acting with the voice. If I say, I love you, I hate you, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm joyful, and I do it all with my nose. Mm, uh, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm joyful, I'm angry, and everything has one color, what the Italians call one timbre, one timbro. The quality of my voice is so that you know it's me if you hear me on the radio, and it doesn't matter if I'm happy, sad, or angry, you'll know who, who, who's singing. You can identify any of the famous singers uh, just by, if you know their voices, no matter what emotion they are portraying. Those singers who tend to sing in the nose, um, it's very hard to identify them because they sound like other people. It could be a number of people. Uh, a lot of singers, especially women, tend to keep the cheeks up a lot. So they do this. So you get, ah, you realize the voice is sort of, half going through the nose and half going in the mask. So the part that's going through the nose doesn't, doesn't carry well and it also colors the sound. So I'd like to, to sh give the, the listener a few exercises or a few concepts so they can identify what the real mask is. The first one that's very simple is to sing over the NG. I call it the hung line. If you say mm or hung, right? That mm is the bottom edge of the true mask. Mm. If I sing into the bottom edge of the true mask, mm, ah, ah, the voice goes through my nose. If I sing under the mm, under the bottom edge of the mask, I get mm, ah, and I'm, I'm getting all kinds of throat resonance. A lot of singers sing that way. 
also doesn't carry very well, although it is darker and fatter in color. The one that we want, the true mask, to identify the mask is to sing over and above that ng line. So if I go now it has no effect on the tone if I pinch my nose closed. So I'm not singing through my nose. I'm singing above the hung line, which throws my voice up here where I'm wearing my glasses, between really uh, above the bridge of the nose where my eyes and my eyebrows are. Uh, Lily Lehman said it's the upper half of the front of the skull that rings. That's the true mask. So by using and keeping the voice over the hung line, making sure that when you phonate the vowels, you go not in the we don't want the voice there and certainly not underneath so you some singers uh, are singing as contraltos when they're really mezzos and mezzos when they're really sopranos and, and heavy sopranos when they're really lyric sopranos and lyric sopranos when they're really high subred coloraturas and you hear to the men all the time big heavier tenors singing as baritones and baritones singing as basses or bass baritones and bass baritones singing as basses the way to find the true mask, your very own mask, your unique mask, is to say, mm, with your corners back, take a deep breath in your lower back, and the lower ribs of your lower back, through the nose, and go, If I let it slip slightly, it doesn't want to go in. So I have to go, and get over that hung line. And that is one way to find the true mask. You have to consider how loud you're going to sing also. I can go, or I can shout. The truth is, as my old teacher, Olga Ries, used to say, sing everything middle power. Never sing as loud as you can, except maybe an occasional rare note. And don't sing too many soft notes either, because the public gets tired of them, gets bored with them. So another way to place the voice, or to find the voice, is by whining. You're letting everyone up stay up tonight and you're making me go to bed and I don't want to go to bed and everyone gets to stay up and watch television and I have to go to bed. When you whine, or when a child whines, you may think that they're focusing the voice in the nose. But they're not. They're above the nose. So the minute I do that, oh my goodness, this is not fair. What's happening? I go, ah, ah, and there I am. I'm above the nasal cavity. I'm singing through my eyes and my eyebrows. Ah, oh my goodness, what's happening? Ah, 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 and the voice is sitting in the mask. Another way to do it is, is through the lip trill. Now I'm talking about loosening the root of the tongue. And if you go, again, when I pinch my nose, it has no effect on the tongue because the tone is not going through my nose. The tongue is, the voice is above, the resonance of the voice is above this entire nasal area. When you try to place the voice, for instance, in these, in these sinus cavities, you realize your voice is going through your nose and you're going to lose color carrying power projection and you're going to lose any kind of variety of timbres of colors happy sad angry nostalgic wistful so you've got to get above uh that nasal position so if i go now i'm above 
up the nose and I'm up in the mask. I'm up there. Ah, 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 ah. There's no reason why I can't just keep the voice up there all the time and not drop it down in my nose. Another way to find it is to go from M to B. If I go, mmm, and my nose is obviously open. If I try to sustain a B, I get mmm, bob, and it stops up my nose completely. So one way to, to eliminate the nasal cavity and be left only with the mask to sing in is to use the consonant B. Ba baby bo boo, ba baby bo boo, ba baby bo boo, ba baby bo boo, ma me me mo boo, ma me me mo boo, ba baby bo boo. So go ba 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 ba. So you go from M to B and eliminate the nasal cavity as a place to resonate and make the voice go over the nasal cavity and and resonate in the true mask. Uh, another variation is the pre-sneeze. So if I think I'm going to sneeze, uh, and I do that, uh, so it's completely out of my nose and up above because my nasal, nasal, my nasal pharynx is lifted up and forward and it's sealing off my nose. What Lily Lehman called moving the back wall of the nose forward. So if I go, oh, oh my goodness, uh, 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 So all I have to do is just say Bob and then maintain that closed nose that comes from saying B as opposed to M. Same thing happens on D as opposed to M. If I go N, when I try to sustain a D, my nose closed. So I go da 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 na 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 na. Then you can use a lip press, right? You go hmm. Now this one is dangerous because the orientation gets so strong up here. <coughs> but for those singers who love to think of the mask and sing according to their concept of the mask, then you can use the lip press pretty well. The mm causes a reaction in my diaphragm any of these exercises <coughs> that becomes diaphragmatically uh, supported will throw the voice up into the mask, into the true mask. <coughs> you can breathe uh, by breathing through the nose and smiling and breathe way down in your lower back. Both Caruso and Lily Lehman said to pull in the abdomen when you breathe in. As a matter of fact, Lily Lehman called it the breath jerk. She said, jerk the abdomen in. So you, by pulling in the abdomen and smiling and breathing in your lower back, you get... Caruso said your lower back works like a bellows. It opens when you breathe and closes when you sing. So I go... Now, the very fact that I breathe that way closes my nose. <laughs> I get a... Every action has an opposite and equal reaction. So if I breathe down low in my back, my soft palate goes up and forward. Soft palates straight up or up and back are, are completely wrong. Those are invented by singers who, who, who never sang over huge orchestras without microphones. You've got to get the voice up in the front, up in the mat. The resonant of the voice has got to be up in the front, um, in the upper half of the face, or they will not hear you over some of these orchestrations. I mean, I've sung Wagner, 135 pieces, orchestra, uh, playing fortissimo. This is no joke. You cannot yell your way through that. You won't survive. I heard one tenor sing it, uh, sing Young Siegfried, the Metropolitan Opera just lose his voice right in the middle. I was in the famous Tristan performance uh, back in the 60s when they had three tenors, one for each act of Tristan. So you cannot pump your breath and pump your lungs and try to make enough volume to sing mu that music overnight. If your voice does not sit in the mass so that it resonates, this strange phenomenon of the human voice that makes it carry like crazy, um, then you're in big trouble when you start singing these great big operas with these great big orchestrations. Another one that we've 
that uh, another one is called nyam. It's got n n y nya and then a vowel nya nye ni nyo nyu. The minute I go nya nya, I again I get that diaphragmatic response nya nya nyo nyo nya. And it's absolutely above my nose. It is not going through the nose at all. It's way up above the bridge of my nose, resonating up here and across my face. So nyam is another one that, that, that when you use it, you will feel the mask and the resonance of the mask. But you don't have to sing there. All you really have to do is sing down here. If you get a proper a diaphragmatic reaction, it will place the voice and keep the voice there as long as you guard your, what the Italians call lean, which is this pressure of the breath against the front of the diaphragm that comes from the lower back. So Caruso's bellows, when he breathes, he opens up his lower ribs in the back. When he starts to sing, he squeezes them together. He describes it very clearly in his book. It's also interesting that book is only 32 pages long and he mentioned breathing 60 times. So his answer obviously to everything was to breathe. Uh, we talked about at one point about maintaining the open throat. You do it by breathing. Then your throat stays open. And the fact that you breathe down and under in the back causes the soft palate to go up and forward, and it will close off your nose completely. Um, another one is the hala, another instigator. It instigates a diaphragmatic response. Hala, hala. So in a minute I have this, this function. Hala. And the voice is, uh, goes over the nasal area, nasal cavity here, above the sinus cavities in the upper cheekbones, and goes, remember, this is the bottom line of the mask. So these cavities in the cheekbones are, are really not good very much. What they do is they're sort of an indicator. If you go, hung, ah, it'll help you find the bottom of the mask. Just remember to sing over that line, over the hung line and above it. <clears throat> Another way to do it, if you breathe correctly, now some of these are really breath dependent and you can't do them if you don't breathe a certain way. So let's use uh, Caruso's or Little Lehman's method. You pull in your abdomen, breathe in your lower back, the chest expands, and then when you when you do a staccato with that kind of breath, the voice is automatically above the nose. And because I breathe down and in, my soft pedal went up and forward, so now my nose again is closed. So these staccati, if you do them after you breathe in deeply into your lower back, will kick the resonance of the voice above the hung line, and then, you, then your voice will not resonate through the nose anymore. Um, probably the last one that I should discuss here is the falsetto attachment. There are two ways to attach the falsetto in the male voice. One is to go, and you can see that the, the falsetto one leaks air like mad. I always say that all of these depend on breathing in your lower back. If I breathe up here like that, then all sorts of strange things start happening to the voice. So you want to breathe in your lower back as deeply as you can and do it all the time and get in the habit of doing it. Caruso did his uh, hike every day for an hour and a half and did the famous uh, breathing exercises also described by Manuel Garcia. 10 seconds inhaling, 10 seconds hold full, 10 seconds exhaling, and 10 seconds hold empty. And he did it when he, with his breathing method. You draw the abdomen in, breathe into the lower back, expand your lower back for 10 seconds, hold the position, then let your abdomen go out what Caruso called, do a contrary motion. If I breathe in, I'm going to do a contrary motion, which means let my abdomen out and let my chest relax out and forward. And I go, 
I don't have to worry about the voice being in my nose. <coughs> so this falsetto attachment is leaking air in the falsetto. Then it stops leaking and it's no longer nasal. So they ask Adelina Napati, what do you think about when you sing? She said, don't sing breathy. Well, that's the whole technique in a nutshell. She never mentioned focus. There are no great singers that talk about focus. You can forget focus. Focus is the low position here. And it has very little to do with good singing because you simply, you, you simply aren't heard well and you certainly can't make colors of your voice. You can't be happy, sad, or angry. So you want to take a deep breath in your lower back. Get a falsetto. And then drop it on your diaphragm. In other words, make the attachment, the attaccamiento. You go breathe, go. And there it is. So this is a number of ways to identify the mask. The mask is what's left if you breathe deep in your back and then do a, then do a, a, a falsetto attachment and then do staccati. That's the way men do it. Women do the opposite. Women can sing a low note, then go breathe and go and they can take that sound and go and sing the what for men is the falsetto and for what women is their head voice and they can do it in a way it doesn't leak. I can go that's how you develop countertenors. I mentioned one time in one of these tapes that uh, some men have voices that are that are very very good for becoming a countertenor. They can make beautiful sounds as a countertenor. When I was in college, I sang as a bass and also did the alto solos sometimes because I had a falsetto. And, um, and my, my bass voice at that age especially was, was completely phony. And all I did was make these phony below the hung line sounds. They gave me a lot of throat resonance and made me sound like some kind of artificial young bass. So the other way to use the falsetto, uh, by the way, this -ah, you can pick a spot anywhere along here and go -ah, and attach it there. I can also go -ah, or here -ah, or I can hear -ah, or even here like Mario De Monaco and Franco Corella in George London. Right in the sternal notch. Any place you stop the breath, what Lily Levin called stopping the breath. Matter of fact, she called it the breath stop. Uh, the Atemverstauen in German it means to, to, to absolutely put a jam, to jam up the breath and not let it come out. She says it's like putting your finger in the dike. So I'm going to breathe. And now I'm going to direct my point of attachment. Let's say it's here. Right? Then you realize something. Nothing passes through your throat except air when you're singing. So if you can control your air, you can prevent damage to your voice. The best way to preserve your voice is to never send more air than your vocal folds can handle. If you overload them and air starts to slip through, it can cause nodules, uh, ruptured blood vessels in the vocal cords, even nerve damage, which is a catastrophe, causes bowed vocal cords, there's all kinds of things that happen in here if you overload the glottis with too much air. So you take a breath, Why do I need more voice than that? For what? And I sang some big operas, believe me. And you don't need more voice than that. You just need the resonance of the mask and the voice will carry it like crazy. Now, another way to use the falsetto in men is the la messa di voce, the, to, the measure of the voice, the placing of the voice. So I go, try it again. Got to make sure that I leak at the beginning.
you can see and the paper tissue paper exercise is one of the oldest exercises in fact the candle flame is even older and maybe even better it takes a lot of patience you're gonna blow out a lot of candles if you practice it but the idea is to get this paper in front of your mouth and practice not leaking so if I'm going the paper is, is leaking like crazy but if I go there's no reason for it to be leaking air. This will cause a reaction right here. It's not hard like a brick. It's not hard as if I'm preparing to, to, uh, for someone to punch me in the belly. It's just taut, T-A-U-T, so like a tennis net. And there's simply no reason to go, hmm, it doesn't help, grunting, pushing like crazy. You take a breath. If it leaks, then you stop the leak, hold the voice right here. If your orientation is singing the math, then where does that one go? right there in the mask and it's not nasal because when I pinch my nose the voice was not affected and if I pinch my nose and the, and the, and the resonance is affected then I'm singing too low I'm singing below the bottom of the hung line the, the, the bottom line of the mask the mask is up here and if I go There's no reason why I can't go back and forth, use different dynamics, and I certainly don't have to sing loud all the time. I can sing a lot soft, too. So I hope these will give someone an idea of how to identify the mask. Caruso said in his book, never sing to the nasal cavity. It's against all the rules of song. So anything that goes in the nose is just plain wrong for a number of reasons. But remember, in his day, there were no sound enhancement systems. Everybody was out on the stage in these big theaters um, with a full orchestra. And a lot of the operas that came along were new and unknown. People didn't have recordings, so they couldn't sit home and listen to recordings of these operas and get to know them, which means their first experience to hear this opera the first time was in the theater. And they had to hear the words and the text. So it's very important that the, that the voice resonate in a way and in a place so that the diction is clear. If I take a breath, and I go, how are you today? So nice to be here. How are you today? Let's go downtown and get something to eat and we'll be back later. And you can understand every word I'm saying. And none of it is in my nose. Okay? Thank you.